So today we're going to continue uh, with describing uh, the frequency response. As I mentioned today, what we're really going to do is describe uh, the two ways we can represent losses. And I, and I mentioned before, uh, what's the importance of loss? So I said before we had this like mass spring damper system. And the damper was the thing that which is mainly going to be concerning us with losses. So, and this there was a zeta parameter, uh, which was a function of different things, but it was proportional to the c factor and also some other um, terms, such as the it was proportional, also inversely proportional to the k constant and the m. It was related to it, uh, but this was the kind of the main feature that it was proportional to the uh, c, the damping coefficient uh, for the damper. So if we have this uh, frequency dependence on, let's say, vibration level or displacement, obviously at the resonance frequency, uh, we're going to have a large displacement. And um, the amount of vibration amplification which is going on, you know, this is going to be a result of the damping. So as we increase the damping, we will get a higher response. So this damping is small. This damping right here is larger. If you keep increasing the damping, basically we're not even going to get a resonance type of, uh, we're not going to get a, an um, amplification at resonance. Uh, we'll just get some sort of a damped uh, transition from the initial um, the initial displacement which goes on at a low frequency to high frequency displacement which is going to be uh, zero uh, you know I mentioned as you shake this thing up really fast up and down up and down uh, you're going to be doing it so fast that the mass can't even respond anymore and at that point you get zero displacement so we're going to now uh, so now we understood and revised the importance of loss it depends it, it gives you how large uh, amplification you get at resonance. There's also other important things about loss, but we'll go over that after we describe uh, the certain case, which we left off actually last time. And let me refresh your memory on what we were talking about last time. So we had two cases. We had this classical case where we have a mass, a spring, constant K, and we have a damper. And we said that the damper is sort of like a viscous damper. The faster you go, the force or, or sorry, velocity, it depends, and the, the uh, stronger the force is. So basically the force depends on the velocity. But then I also gave you this other case, uh, which, which has this K spring constant. But I mentioned the spring constant is also, uh, has an imaginary term and a um, real term, you know, prime and double prime. This was similar to the discussion earlier where we talked about piezoelectric materials. I mentioned the elastic compliance. It is a complex term. The elastic compliance has both a real part and an imaginary part. Therefore, these uh, these representations are simple, are, are, are comparable, whereas this is not exactly uh, the same here. And I'm going to show you what is the difference between this case and what is the difference between this case? Why are we using imaginary? Why don't we use something like this viscous damping uh, going on here? Why do we insist on using uh, imaginary numbers? And for this case, um, I'm going to describe the velocity. So we know the velocity uh, is related to the derivative of the displacement. So if we have a displacement, let's say d, delta d and let's say delta d time and we have this obviously as a sign omega t let's say that we're, we're uh, for a certain displacement we're going to have uh, the derivative of it which is going to be the velocity so the velocity as a function of time is going to be the derivative of this which is going to be delta d naught, which is the amplitude of the vibration of the displacement, times omega cosine omega t. So basically, this right here, 
uh, del the amplitude of the displacement times the uh, frequency is going to be the velocity, the velocity amplitude. Um, so let's let's take a look at and uh, so we, we mentioned the viscous damper. I'm just going to draw this this point. This model says that loss is proportional to the velocity. This model, k complex, says that loss is proportional to the displacement. So what are the difference between these two actually? Having the loss proportional to the velocity, because the faster you go, the more you lose energy. Or the loss of the proportional to the displacement. Uh, basically on how much energy you're storing in the spring is gonna be related to how much energy you're losing. So to understand this, uh, take these two examples. Take this frequency response. So let's look at the frequency response. And we know that uh, from before in a, in a Peter's electric material, uh, we have this such electric field times the uh, the E constant, which is D times over the uh, displaced uh, the elastic compliance. This is equal to the stress, and stress is kind of like a force. You know, force area equals sorry stress area equals force so let's say we're keeping the force constant basically and we are wondering about the displacement which we will call we're not gonna call it delta D let's call it uh, yeah let's, let's just call it delta D and we're gonna be worrying about the velocity which I'm gonna draw in red so we, we have to utilize and understand two equations here to map this out. We have the velocity is equal to omega d. And uh, we have the other uh, notion that, you know, at um, the resonance frequency, f, let's call it fr, at the, re at the resonance frequency, Uh, we have this uh, this case being true, the resonance frequency or omega, and or it's called a lot of different things. We'll just call it omega r. The resonance frequency is for a mass spring damper system, k over m. The spring constant, the real part, or or just the regular part if it's for the viscous damper case. So it's it's k over m. So we'll just draw the residence frequency here. Uh, so we have the displacement. Let's draw the displacement. And this is for just the arbitrary case where we where we have a. Well, we'll, we'll draw displacement actually in green because we started with green. Okay, we have the displacement, and uh, obviously this was uh, the frequency. So what is the uh, voltage? So this is the normal response to the displacement. Uh, but what if I told you, I'm going to alter this electric field amplitude. As I change the frequency, I'll alter the electric field amplitude such that the displacement remains constant. So let's say the displacement is actually constant. In order to, to keep a comp constant displacement, uh, what are we going to need to do to the voltage? So we'll draw the voltage in gray. Uh, and we'll, the voltage will be, I'll write a capital V. And I'll just draw that for a capital V. So the voltage actually, as we approach resonance, we have to use a small voltage, right? But this, is, this is kind of working opposite. So this is the voltage that we're going to have to use, or the electric field, or you could do all the electric field, or you could say it's the stress. 
that we're going to need to use or we can say it's the force you know whichever lung you like to use you can use any of them we're going to be using these we're going to say that we want to keep the displacement constant as we're changing the frequency and thus we're going to have to decrease the voltage as we get to resonance and then once we pass resonance uh, we're going to increase the voltage to keep their displacement the same amount next we will uh, determine this relationship uh, sorry, we'll apply this relationship. So th the velocity in this case is going to be proportional to the displacement. So let's say we start with the velocity somewhere over here. Uh, and it's going to be proportional to the displacement. So, I mean, proportional to the um, frequency. So we'll just draw a straight line. We'll draw a straight line. So this is the case where the, vo where the uh, voltage is related to the um, the, the vibration velocity uh, is increasing as we're increasing the uh, we're going higher in frequency because we're keeping the uh, D uh, which is the uh, displacement constant by altering the electric field or the stress or the uh, whatever kind of uh, method you're using to apply that force. So this is kind of interesting. I mentioned before uh, that loss is proportional to vibration velocity in this case and loss proportional to displacement in this case. So look at this. What do you think is going to happen as we are increasing our vibration level? I mean, as we're sweeping the frequency, we're going to have increasing loss. This vibration velocity, we can also say this is loss energy. And we're going to, I'm going to draw a C. And this C is which stands for the viscous, the viscous damping constant. You could, the loss energy is going to be proportional to the velocity, and the velocity is increasing as you increase frequency. Therefore, uh, the lost energy due to that viscous damping is going to be increasing. But in the case of the uh, constant displacement, we're going to be getting a constant, uh, I'm going to call it K star, sub K star. This energy lost, which is going to be the energy lost in the case of a... Uh, imaginary you know imaginary spring that energy is going to stay constant this is per cycle remember we're talking per cycle that energy is going to stay constant that energy loss you can also do the other other case where we had uh, the by we can change the the forcing we can change the forcing such that the velocity is constant so let's just draw that in red again, because we did it last time. So the velocity is constant, V. The displacement in green, I mentioned that uh, the velocity equals the omega times the delta D. So basically velocity divided by uh, frequency equals displacement. So basically the displacement is going to be decreasing. We'll call that delta D in blue. This, so the displacement decreases as you increase the frequency uh, if you keep the velocity constant. Obviously, uh, we're going to have a resonance frequency here somewhere. And in order to keep that constant vibration velocity, uh, we'll draw the, re we'll draw the uh, v uh, voltage in V, or the stress, or the force, whichever one you prefer. Uh, that is going to have to be the least at resonance because, all re because you're going to have the amplification factor. So this is a kind of understanding of what these different uh, loss mechanisms do for you. So, uh, so here again, the losses from the viscous damping they're going to be the, they're going to be constant per cycle, and the losses if you use the spring model, the the the, the complex spring model they're going to be decreasing. So we'll see this difference uh, in the losses, both from these two different models here. So I'll continue in the next video uh, with a short continuation uh, of this one to finish off this topic about what's the difference between these two cases and which one is correct to use for piezoelectric materials.